And welcome, everyone, to the latest anime news for the week ending October 31st, Halloween 2020. Let us get started. Uh, remember last week when Netflix announced their new partnerships with even more anime studios? This week they held a live stream um, where they uh, dedicated it entirely to anime. So we've got quite a few new announcements to report on this week. And uh, first up, a couple of anime based on some well-established non-anime franchises. If you're craving some mechs, some kaiju, or some mechs fighting kaiju, Polygon Pictures has you covered Pacific Rim The Black, is set to premiere sometime in 2021. The 3D animated series, based on the live-action films, will follow two siblings, an idealistic teenage boy and his naive younger sister, that's original, who are forced to pilot an abandoned Jaeger across a hostile landscape in a desperate attempt to find their missing parents. Polygon previously produced Netflix's Blam, or Blame, and Godzilla Kaiju Wakusei films. So... Yes, that is a thing that is coming soon to Netflix. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you sound thrilled. I, I, well, I, never, see, I never saw Pacific Rim. Rim so I, I don't know what mm. Pacific Rim really is. So Charlie Day, Charlie Day is the best part of Pacific Rim. True. Yes. I'll, I'll agree because I trust y'all. <laughs> it's it's oh. Mecha fighting kaiju. I mean, that is what that movie is. Yeah. yeah, and that's so. It, it, I mean, why is why is theoretically what a very little I know of Pacific Rim? Why is it all that much different than Movlove? Um, because using it, mecha fighting, invading things that eat people and their monsters, and you kill them, and you because save it was the world. made by Hollywood and made a lot of money. Basically, you know, the, the fact that it was not made oh, in Japan, okay. Um, okay. and that a lot of Western people actually turned up, tuned in to watch it, um, really? and it wasn't a failure. Right, um, so yeah. it, it caught attention for the fact that oh, people in America actually like giant robots. So now, who was in Pacific Rim? Was it Channing Tatum or something? Was a pilot or something? Uh, boy, no, it wasn't the one with Rihanna. Hero. Rihanna, the battleship thing, was it? No. No. Oh, okay, that would not. Be <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I've seen the reviews of that one, and they're not good. Yeah. Um, let me just. Uh, it's it not a good um, movie. Um, that that is uh, Charlie Hunnam. Charlie Hunter. Um, Idris Elba. Yes. Um, uh, well, just, that's why I forgot he was in there. Yep. Rico Kikuchi and Ron Perlman, actually, um, as one of the things. Ron um, Perlman? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's a, a yeah. major character. Um, Hell, Hellboy was in that? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> it had a budget of $180, $200 million and made four hundred. Um, Damn. So, yeah, people were uh, okay. were turning up for that. Um they had 114 million so in net. China alone. Um, but, but really, Charlie Day is really the, the best part of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it and, and the other thing, too, so we'll dive into it a little bit. Um, uh, Guillermo del Toro is a Mecca fan, and so it is very much a Mecca movie. It's not just a Hollywood movie with giant robots in it, it has yeah. all the tropes, all the elements. Um, he talks about how. This mecha is based on a Zaku from Gundam. This mecha is based on, you know, a, a, uh, I think there's a great thing actually where he, Guillermo del Toro is in Japan doing like a press junket and they take him to a, a gun plus store and walk him through that. Oh. Um, and like, he's pointing out mecha saying, you know, this Jaeger is based on that. And this is based on that. And here's what I've watched and all this kind of stuff. So it's like, okay, dude, you know, oh. Wow, know what you're talking knows about. his source material. Exactly. Very cool. Um, and yeah. so it's a it's it's a it's a very good fusion of you know big popcorn Hollywood action movie and okay. all of the uh, uh, the, the classic <laughs> Mecca stuff. So we'll see. And it's just, it is kind of funny seeing you know Mecca cross over to Hollywood and then cross over back into uh, anime. Um, um, so so Netflix has a proven track record film to base a. Right. Their hopes for additional yeah. income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Eh, who knows? Um, and certainly, you know, th that Blam film was pretty much spot on in terms of tone and style and so forth. So, right, right. fair enough. Well, we'll see how see how it rolls. Exactly. Not much else we can do. Um, now, the Assassin's Creed game fr franchise has been going strong since it began back in 2007 and shows no sign of stopping. 
This week, Netflix teased not only an Assassin's Creed anime, but a whole Assassin's Creed TV universe, including live action, animated, and anime series. Unfortunately, the anime is probably a ways off as they plan to begin this TV universe with the live action adaptation, which is currently still looking for a showrunner. The games also inspired a live action movie adaptation back in 2016, although we hope this anime will be better received than the movie was, as well as a number of manga series. The latest Assassin's Creed Blade of Shaojun is set to debut in February of next year. Um, I have very, very, very little uh, exposure to the Assassin's Creed universe. How about you guys? A uh, smidge of it. The movie was 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 awful, okay. and the way that they, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was just like I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was just awful, yeah. and and the way that they actually um, made the movie translate to the game was that they actually had a, if I'm remembering this correctly they had a descendant of one of the assassins and they hooked them up into this machine and then they put like you know oh like, oh no that, on. that's a it's, thing in assassin's creed that, that that is a that is a part of that universe oh yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. So, so so you know that's that's that and you yeah. have to go back in time and you know whatever oh, and, yeah. and it just it did in in terms of the movie mm. and the action it didn't really it doesn't translate very well mm-hmm. So it might work on different platforms. So it might work with the anime. Yeah. It might work, you know, in other in other ways. But it mm-hmm. just it just wasn't good. And I, you know, it said to me, it said, yeah, I, I suck at video games. So yeah, yeah. it's not like I really played the game. I watch it for the cutscenes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yep, yeah. But um, it's an interesting premise. But I just don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just, I'll, I'll be. You know what? I'll give the anime a try when yep. it comes out. I'm, I might even give the manga a try, just mm-hmm. because they're two different totally platforms. True. So, you know, see what happens. Yeah, uh, I'm not holding my breath. I I saw some of it. Okay. Um, it, it there's it, but there's things. Years ago, mm. the ex-wife for Christmas presented me a 32 inch Sony flat screen TV and an Xbox nice. and Assassin's Creed. Ah, cool. Hmm. I have not played a console since Atari. <laughs> yeah. So I looked at this and I said, "Oh, cool, thanks." But well, you can watch like Crunchyroll and stuff on the Xbox, do whatever else, and then proceeds to <clears throat> load up Assassin's Creed, and then she played for like three weeks. <laughs> okay. So I watched like she's yeah. climbing towers and jumping this mm-hmm. and doing that, and then I was like, "Huh." She says, do you want to try? And I look at the Xbox controller. I'm like, there's not a single joystick and one button. <laughs> I have no idea how this thing works. So I pressed everything at once and did this and that. And then I don't know what the hell happened. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> my experience with the, with the franchise has not been stellar, shall we say. Mm-hmm. So I, what I saw of it was the graphic rendering was good. Mm-hmm. I didn't really see that. Or at least I didn't really understand what the overall storyline was. It was mm-hmm. like you, know, you just you had questy mission things, and mm-hmm. eh, you know what mm-hmm. I mean. It's like it's not. It didn't inspire me enough to to be excited to see that there's an anime coming out. Fair, That's, yeah, yeah. I played some yeah. of I'm forgetting the name of it, but the the one set in ancient Greece, um, mm-hmm. uh, and I actually bought the one set in ancient Egypt, but never played it. Um, which I probably should do at some point because that's money <laughs> down the drain. Because um, I love those two periods of history. Yeah. And um, uh, started the one in ancient Greece and really enjoyed it and then hit a difficulty spike. Where I'm like, oh, this is hard. Like, I, I can't just sort of run in and kill things. Um, and, you know, just didn't get back to it. Um, yeah. So, I, I, so again, here's, here's me with console games. Mm. <laughs> yep. That's the problem. That works kind of that works kind of <clears throat> successfully with with FIFA uh, f- uh soccer. Ah, okay. <laughs> I was going to say I was going to say gotcha. football. Um yeah. and, and you can kind of sort of do that, but I it just the results are are mm, yeah. <laughs> random uh, at best. Yeah. <laughs> like, Not very effective. Yeah, now, 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 if you played Super Nintendo SNES hockey, mm. kick you all your butts. Gotcha. Mm. Fair enough. 
but yeah. but you give me something that complicated, not complicated, but you know, like mm. Assassin's Creed console of, well, of yeah, today, I, I'm just like, uh... I could do the NES controller, the little cruciform on the yeah, on the gotcha. left and the A B button on the right. I could do that one. I I got better than the, just a single joystick and button. So <laughs> you know, I, I grew. I... Well, Sonex's adorable lazy bear Rila Kuma is returning to the screen. The new stop-motion anime series will be titled Rila Kuma's Theme Park Adventure and is coming soon to Netflix. The series depicts an active day of incidents and meetings, which sounds like my job, when Rila Kuma and his friends Korila Kuma, Kiroi Tori, and Kaoru go play in an amusement park that's about to close. The staff from 2019's Rila Kuma and Kaoru series will be returning to produce the new show at Dwarf Studios and TYO Inc. The Rila Kuma character, designed by Aki Kondo, was originally introduced in 2003. It sounds like you guys know something about this uh, this character. <laughs> well, what I know from it is actually from Otakon, because mm. several you see several of those beers. I've got uh, mm. I've got like a on my hard drive over here. I've got a ton of pictures of people cosplaying it. And I just kind of laugh because more often than not, the cosplay is, is, is not inappropriate. Oh, hmm. like, yeah. Like, uh, the, uh, uh, doing inappropriate things with other characters. Let's okay. just put it that way. Hmm. But it's a cute little show. It's a hmm. cute little show. It's a fun little show. It's one of those, it's one of those shows that, you know, if you're, if you're tired of, uh, Paul patrol, your kid watching Paul <laughs> patrol or something like mm-hmm. that. You know, just kind of graduate them over going can't stand the theme song let's switch it over here you know and see if you like it okay. but it's a fun little thing and and it's just you know when people do cosplay they they generally have a good time okay. when they're doing a pro when they're being okay, appropriate sure. exactly well i've yeah. i've seen a ton of it like mm. merch mm. Yeah. just like a ton of mm. merch like yeah. little like nendoroid bear kind of things cupochi stuff uh uh zippered pouches like school id pouches yes. like, yeah pill- pillows uh plushies all co- I, mm-hmm. having seen so much of it i mean i think i saw there was some new release of it that they did just last week and at the same time every time i see these new releases of it i'm like what is this <laughs> I'm like yeah the bear's kind of cute but it's just like it's a kind of a generic kind of teddy bear kind of look i'm mm-hmm. like i'm assuming it's a kid's show mm-hmm. so i'm mm-hmm. i'm guessing it's not in my sort of strike zone for for shows but mm-hmm. i love japari park i mean at some point you know yeah. i might end up there i don't know mm-hmm. yep it's gotta be one of those things i'm i'm willing to bet um now one second there we go gotcha <laughs> Um, it seems folks are nostalgic for the old days lately, like the NES, with revivals and remakes being popular across lots of different media, and anime is no exception. This week it was revealed that a new anime is in the work for Clamp's classic manga, Tokyo Babylon. Produced by Studio Gohans, the new Tokyo Babylon 2021 anime will premiere in 2021 and be set in that year as well. The original manga took place in 1991, in a time when the last days of Japan's bubble economy had brought about money and elegance, and with them, dark and evil spirits. The story follows the powerful Onyoji, legendary Japanese occultists, the only ones who can combat those dark spirits. The manga was serialized from 1990 to 1993 and spans seven volumes. It's already inspired two OVAs, one in 1992 and one in 94, plus a 93 live-action film, which I would love to see, and more than a few music videos. The lead character has also had some time in the limelight before, as he also appeared in Clamp's X manga and its anime adaptations, and probably showed up somewhere in Tsubasa, um, if I don't miss my guess, because everyone does. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is a um, uh, actually a classic sort of thing for, for Halloween, because that was, uh, it's, you know, fighting spirits... Um, uh, you know, supernatural action kind of a thing from the fine ladies at Clamp. I have I have found Tokyo Babylon manga. Like whenever I do, back when we had conventions, way back when, when we actually went to a place to to mm-hmm. see this stuff. Um, so you know, in the dealer's room, I would always find uh, the manga from you know. Mm-hmm. Early on, and you know, in a discount bin, you know, like yeah. you know, like four, four, five dollars, whatever. 
And <clears throat> I, I never picked it up. I never got. I never got around to actually reading the manga. Yeah. Um, I see clips from the anime in, like you said, in in AMVs all over the place. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's 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 not mysterious to me. I just haven't watched it yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, as I say, I just like Clamp. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. it's probably going to be one of those things that's going to sort of run across my my radar when it happens, but. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, Clamp exactly. Clamp has their has their visual style. Very they have their so. thing. I mean, mm-hmm. I I like mm-hmm. you know, uh, Champ uh, Clamp did Chobits. They did um, Kobato. Mm-hmm. Think, what they mm-hmm. was that Clamp? I so. Um, so I, I like their I like their designs. I like the sort of kind of the interesting ways that they take their characters. So mm-hmm. I I'll, I'll you know when this when this yeah. launches, twenty twenty one. Hopefully it'll be a better year for us all. <laughs> Hi, Captain Sakura is one of the cutest anime we ever made. Uh-huh. Um, so, whoops, here we go. Um, we'll be back with some other anime announcements, but first, game company Visual Arts Key has also been busy this week with a couple of big announcements of upcoming media. First up, they announced a new partnership with figure, figure maker Kotobukiya to produce a mixed media project called Prima Doll. The story centers on automaton girls who are created as weapons. Haven't heard that one before. Because cute girls are always the best weapon to win wars, apparently. Fortunately, or unfortunately for these girls, though, the great war they were created for ended a few years ago. So, of course, they now work at a cafe and search for the meaning of their birth. The project will create various media based on themes of songs and dolls and innocent wishes and emotions beginning with a voiced web novel, whose first episode debuted yesterday. Kotobukiya will, of course, also create original figures based on the characters, so fans can have their own mini-weapon-turned-cafe waitress. Uh, Key's game designer Naga created the character designs, alongside illustrator Fujichoko and manga artist Yui Hara. Um, I'll admit, like, looks Hmm. cute, looks fun. Um... Hmm. Uh, wasn't Violet Evergarden? Uh, she was a mm-hmm. weapon of war, and then yep. she tried to figure out what to do when there was no war. Mm-hmm. Yep. Isn't that the basic premise of Violet Evergarden? Mobarajo, from like two thousand two. It just sounds like it just sounds like yeah, it just sounds like a cute Blade Runner to me. <laughs> cute, oh, cute Blade Runner! Oh, that could be a I good tagline for them. I need cute to see a chibi Blade Runner. Runner now. Little chibi Deckard running around, you know. Yeah. Big gun. <laughs> oh, awesome. That's just awesome. Um, I mean, it'll be. I'll, I'll be interested to see what tone they're going to take with this. Is yeah. it going to be? Is it going to? Is it going to address anything that you would think like? Um, mm. like I've talked before before about. I think it's it's Iska, mm. where she is a former magical girl. The war is oh, over. A magical girl, Iska. Yeah. And yeah, and she is like, she's dealing, she, you know, sees people dressed up in a costume to hand out balloons to children. It's, you know, that's fairly normal. It's not exciting. It's just fairly normal kind of thing, except for the, you know, aliens, evil things that she used to kill all the time looked Mm -hmm. like stuffed costume characters. Mm -hmm. So she has PTSD moments where she's just like, I don't know what to do about this. So it's like, are they going to, you know, is it going to be like a really serious vibe on that where it's like, okay, they're at a cafe. They're trying to sort of reprogram themselves into like civil society. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have these moments where somebody will drop a a dish and it'll make a Mm -hmm. loud bang. And you'll see them like snap back into war moment. Like the grenade Mm -hmm. went off. They're ready to fight. Or or leave a bad tip. Yeah. Leave Mm -hmm. a bad tip and they they rip somebody's arm off. Uh, Mm Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'd be really curious to see how they play that because you know, anytime you have cute girls in a cafe, this how can you how can you hate that? This is the company <laughs> that made Air Cannon and Clannad, so yeah. I'm suspecting there will be <laughs> something, some kind of drama going on. Better not make me cry like Clannad. <laughs> oh, come on! One right. of them will have the Roy Batty speech. Yes, the Roy <laughs> Batty speech at the end of Blade Runner. So the sea beams on this on the outside of Orion. <laughs> yeah, 
it's it's weird and, and this is oh, the thing is that, you know, this is a you know it's one of those things that can go lots of different directions you can go very light and fun with it um i don't think you know i doubt it's going to go massively tragic all the time um but it could it, you know it has potential has well, so many i can't rem- i can't remember the the series i, I i'm in mm. the, somewhere in the middle of it because it's not terribly compelling but mm. It's <clears throat> vaguely interesting enough mm-hmm. where a bunch of girls work at a cafe mm-hmm. and part of their daily duties are cleaning and serving customers, etc. Mm-hmm. except for when classic works of literature are in danger of being deleted from existence. Okay. In which case, then they leave it through a portal. Oh, this one yeah. into like an alternate world mm-hmm. and fight to save the existence of good literature. Mm-hmm. Uh, or liter- uh, ma- manga. Yeah, it's in mm-hmm. manga that they're trying to save. Mm-hmm. Um, classified as good literature because I don't uh, whatever. Sure. Uh, <laughs> but you know what I mean. It's like one of those things where it's like that's just kind of you know it's a goofy kind of fun little romp. Girls mm-hmm. in a cafe doing stuff. So I I could hope for that. Please don't yeah. don't make this terrible like terrible terrible <laughs> sad. Please no. <laughs> Three guesses. Um, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Visual Arts Key also announced a lineup of new kinetic novels this week. Three upcoming novels were revealed. Project Looper, Project Lunar, and Project Porter. Project Looper features scenario creation from Ryukishi 07, the original creator of Higarashi. Yay! And illustrations by Kei Mojizuki. It tells the story of high schooler Tyra, who is obsessed with geocaching, then, while treasure hunting during summer vacation, Tyra and her friends suddenly get drawn into a mysterious incident. Quote, swallowed up by a time vortex, they are trapped in a never-ending time loop repeating today again and again. Then they meet other loopers. If they join forces, will they be able to break out from their eternal prison? End quote. The release date is simply listed as coming soon, so fans will have to keep their eyes peeled for more details. Uh, Project Lunar and Project Porter are both set to release sometime in 2021, though, so hopefully not too much longer to wait. Project Lunar focuses on T-Bit, an undefeated genius gamer who rules the competitive scene in VR action battle racing game Skyout, until one day he wanders into Lunar World, a mysterious moon server that no one knows about, where he meets Lunar uh, rejected AI mascot, um, blah, 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 blah. Lastly, Project Porter takes place on an Earth taken over by machines, where humanity lives in the shadows. Um, then a transporter receives a, a cargo transport, which is, you guessed it, an android girl, um, who was developed as a substitute for a family member, um, and, um, uh, the rumor in the world is that androids who reach the top might be able to ma- be made human. So, who knows? Um, lots of potential stuff there. Looks like the kind of, uh, throwing, uh, uh, Throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall to see what sticks. What are th- what are kinetic novels? I'm assuming that's a great question. I be- I'm assuming these are um, novels. I'm looking it up right now. Um, With visuals and you click through it or something. Um. um oh, it, it's a visual novel with no branches. It's a visual novel with just one storyline all the way through. There, there are no okay. variations on that. Oh, okay. Because okay. Looper sounds like Groundhog Day. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, Lunar sounds almost vaguely like it's somehow related to Log Horizon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, Porter kind of reminds me of the, the becoming human kind of thing. Almost reminds me of uh, Sekirei. Hmm. Where the last remaining Sekirei gets the super prize hmm. and moves on to like this whatever hmm. the great beyond. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's good to see them trying a variety yeah. of things. Um, you know, any one of those could could have uh, have depth and complexity. Um, I'm curious that they're throwing three at the wall at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, right. that's like. You guys, you well, good for you. There's a lot of and, pent up frustration at the at the yeah. COVID year of 2020, so they're just like yeah. throw it all. Well, good. and you know, video games are making all the money right now, so yeah. hey, why not? Um, it's also probably one of those things, in fairness, where like these have been cooking for a little while, and then they kind of all yeah. came together at once. Like, okay, great, let's kind of 
move forward on all of them. And obviously, they'll come out at slightly different times. But um, right. yeah, it, 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 it is interesting that they're like, here's a bunch of stuff for you all. Cool. Order, I'd like to see an anime. Mm, mm -hmm. You know, not that I think Lunar isn't doesn't sound like a bad premise, or that that mm -hmm. the other uh, Looper doesn't sound like a bad yeah. premise, but Porter, I always like the idea is the android girl going to be really really cute and kind of funny and clumsy what do you and think? Yet like this massively destructive <laughs> what weapon. What do you like, think? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> oh please. Oh come now. <laughs> when is she ever not? Like name me a time. <sighs> will, will she be a Nendoroid or will she be a Max Factory? Yes. Yes, to both of those questions. It will, they will be all of the things. Um, oh, huzzah. I need yeah. to build shelves. We need to have a, a, a hobby hopper to build there shelves. We go. I did that. I already covered that. There's an episode on I that. know. Well, I'm going to have to go back and watch it again. There we Damn. are. Exactly. Uh, let's see here. Um, also this week, some news stories that uh, if we want to dive into, we can. But otherwise, are just kind of interesting to note in passing it wouldn't be halloween without some horror anime and netflix has covered on that front as well an anime adaptation of high rise invasion the manga is on the way uh which will premiere in february of next year worldwide uh the series tells the story of high school girl yuri hanjo who finds herself lost in an abnormal space full of skyscrapers and bridges where mass killers hunt down and slaughter their confused victims um be produced um at zero g um and the teaser trailer I uh, posted this week. If comedy is more your style, the next one's for you. Kosuke Ono's The Way of the House Husband manga is inspired in Netflix anime adaptation sometime next year. Um, follows a retired Yakuza member who enjoys his post-crime life as a house husband. But he retains his crime lord personality, but of course. Um, um, meanwhile, an anime adaptation of Mari Mazaki's bathhouse comedy manga Thermai Romai is also coming to Netflix next year. Um, it follows a Roman bath designer, as in ancient Rome, who accidentally time travels to present-day Japan and learns about Japanese bath culture. Um, so, you know, um, should be fun. Um, it, it previously inspired a three-episode anime in 2012 and two live-action films. Our last Netflix series is based on the Filipino graphic novel Tres, or Trece. Um, uh, it is an urban fantasy graphic novel series telling the story of a supernatural investigator who solves crimes in Manila and features Filipino mythology interacting with the modern world. Um, also announced this week that uh, Kumiko Saiki's Kageki Shoujo manga is inspiring a TV anime in 2021. Um, it will be based on season zero, the, the 2019 reprint version. It's set at a young women's arts academy where they play all the parts of a theater production themselves, male or female, so like the Takarazuka Review. Um, and follows a pair of roommates, a jaded former idol and a bright country girl. Big shocker there again. Um, the Demon Slayer Mugen Train film continues racing down the record-breaking track. It has earned more than 10 billion yen in its first 10 days, making it the fastest film to earn 10 billion yen in Japan ever taking that title from 2001 Spirited Away, which took 25 five days to earn 10 billion yen um spirit away remains the top grossing film of all time in japan but if mugen train continues as it has been it might be coming for that record too uh too soon um bandai's mega house corporation is holding its mega hobby expo online this weekend um a bunch of products um, at the event demon slayer digimon adventure mobile suit gundam one piece um, and online attendees can actually preview the, view, the figures in a full 360-degree view, which is pretty cool. Um, the website will remain up until November 16th. Last up, Bondi is partnered with NEU, NEU, no, NEU, 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 a joint venture between Tohoku University and Hitachi High Tech to move the world one step closer to mind-controlled robots. What could possibly go wrong? Um, they developed a suite of software and hardware that allows the user to remote control a miniature Zaku model using signals from their mind. Um, it uses a smartphone app to control the miniature Zaku, which uses near-infrared spectroscopy to monitor cerebral blood flow. Um, it relays information to the, the app, which interprets the brain activity into one of three programmed commands. So it's not that flexible just yet, but um, uh, we'll see what's going on, and there's, it's still undecided whether that'll turn into a commercial product 
or not. Um, it, it better damn well be. <laughs> okay, one is move forward, two is move back, three is swivel. Command received. Four. Destroy <laughs> human time. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> I want this so badly. I'm going to. I, no, you know what? I, I shouldn't have this technology. <laughs> I, I, I should not have this technology. I, I will. Screw it. I'm going to take over the world. This is what we do. <laughs> All right. Which one of you destroyed the entire eastern seaboard of the United States? <laughs> Steve, we're looking at you. Oh, uh, my bad. Mm, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, funny story. Mm -hmm. Sent a uh, a a message off to a friend of mine who lives in Tokyo. He he has a house in California. Lives in Tokyo. Mm. Travels back and forth. Um, asking just you know sort of general. How'd you guys weather the wildfires? How's things mm -hmm. going? You know, you with the wife and the kids, etc. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Well, I'm back in Tokyo right now. Now, and this is this is me, you know, paraphrasing, mm -hmm. semi quoting him." Now, I, I know you're kind of into this anime thing, right? Um, have you heard about this Demon Slayer series? I'm, li I'm like, <laughs> go on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the girls started Continue. watching it. And mind you, his, his daughters are like, they're, not, they're eight and nine. Okay. So they're, mm -hmm. they're still fairly young. Mm -hmm. um, he said, the girls have started watching this Demon Slayer show. And it wasn't something that we wanted them to watch because, mm. you know, his, his, his <laughs> wife and he, they're, you know, they're, they're all Japanese citizens with, mm. you know, back and forth, green card kind of thing going on. Mm. But so his wife and him don't really like too much anime kind of stuff. They mm. would, you know, prefer the girls to do more, you know, constructive things with their time. Sure. But so he's telling me this. He's like, they've been watching it and they've been sort of sneaking around doing it. So... We sat down and we watched it with them. Oh my gosh, is it good? I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna go see the film now. I'm back in Tokyo though for the next week or so. I'm going to the movie theater. I gotta watch it. It's such a great series. Have you seen it? I'm like, wow. And another you, fan you like, is born. But it's just so funny because it's like we talked back in school, and it's like, yeah. As a kid, he read like some manga. He mm. he saw like a few anime, mm -hmm. nothing huge, and it didn't really resonate right. with him particularly. And it's just like, wow, we're both getting on towards fifty, and he's now like, oh my gosh, this is so cool! It's like, ah, ah, ah. I'm sort of still in it. I gotta send him a link apparently to this I was to, right to this all video. Along. Oh boy. <laughs> I was right all along. There we go. God, that's exactly. <laughs> so that's hilarious. that was you know. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing that. It's like I've yeah. only you know now successfully seen two episodes of Kimetsu no Yaiba, mm -hmm. but apparently I got I you know I I did enjoy that bit I saw. I yeah. liked the way the style of it. I liked the way it goes. And geez, when you get somebody who makes a full on conversion, <laughs> yeah. hell yeah! Apparently this is the way to go. <laughs> well, and it's amazing. I mean. The, the, the success of this film because you know again it's one thing to be successful to make a lot of money but the the speed of it yeah. is mind blowing yeah. um, everyone thought Ten, okay Ten billion. Billion. billion oh yen. my god um and just rocking along um yeah you know i figured it would and be here i am thank but I was gonna say here I am getting excited about the house husband anime. I'm like, oh, that <laughs> I want to watch that. It's, I'm right excited for that too. You're, you're, I'm like, I'm like, you're not oh, alone. God. <laughs> oh my god, ten billion, jeez. Yeah, and I, I think most people, I'll, I'll say, I, I expected. Okay, it did great opening weekend. Everyone went to see it. All the anime fans went to see it. They brought all their friends. Their friends were like, oh, that's cool. Fine, you know, it'll, it'll kind of ease off after. Nope. It just Jeez. keeps going. Yeah. Um, Which for them, I mean, could you imagine, you know, the people who, are, who hold the royal, the royalties <laughs> reigns on these things that are just going, they are so oh, happy right my. now. Mm -hmm. Nice. We're in Wesley. money. Yeah. We're in the money. There we go, Wesley. Yeah. I mean, for some reason, I, I shouldn't say for some reason, but this is a, one of those series that just is captured. Well, here's the weird thing is you think, you know, you know, what are the highest grossing like anime films in Japan? Akira. Spirited Away. 
the movie of this shonen series. Like, wow, you know, <laughs> like that's a lineage, you know. I, I, yeah. So, so I can just see in the future and in the near future, there's going to be like a film class. And they're going to talk about animation, and they're going to bring those yeah. Yeah. titles up, and then they're going to go. And then there was this thing, and everyone's just going to go. <sighs> lost the thread i don't yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> what what happened what yeah, it, it would be like you know akira spirited away one piece movie like, <laughs> right. okay I, okay sure right. yeah, yeah that, would, that would be even even crazier which how many one piece movies are there by the way oh i'm sure quite a few um, I was going to say, there's... for for a thousand episode run, yeah. I imagine they probably have more than a handful. Um, let me just... When's by Moro Hosoda, actually? Um, Hosoda directed one, which people believe might be a coded um, story about his time working at Studio Ghibli. Um, quite huh. possibly. Um, Clockwork Island Adventure, was there, I believe. No, no, was no. there a genius little troll who like <laughs> kept changing the storylines every 15 minutes and making everybody do do much more work than they needed to? Oh, no, no. That's um, not the storyline at all. Mm. <laughs> oh, no, no. Um, let me just pull that up. Um, let's see if it's in the Wikipedia. No, Wikipedia doesn't mention it at all. Um, I think it was a... And the a, bad character was named... Uh, uh, Ziumaki. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> wait a minute. Yeah. Um, Can't do maybe that. It, maybe it wasn't about. It, 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 yeah, I, I'm. I'm not sure. But yeah, there. It's. Well, let's see here. Um, um, the Straw Hats are Stephen Island, an invitation to an island run by Baron Omatsuri. <laughs> um, the Baron uh -huh. welcomes them to a resort and encourages them to enjoy themselves, but only after they complete the trials of hell. Um, they that might the be a not so thinly veiled <laughs> jab. The Straw Hats win the first trial, tr trial, but the outraged Baron demands they complete in, compete in another challenge, um, and they continue doing uh, uh, doing that. Um, Luffy receives an ominous warning about the Baron splitting up his crew, um, and uh, uh, things go on from there. But yeah, apparently. Um, Arguments over who's to blame. And yet and somehow, disappearing. So, uh, so somehow, mysteriously at the end, they're all spirited away from this yeah, situation. Hey, oh, hey, you! No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's one of those things where, maybe may, you could see it. Maybe. Uh, who knows? Mm. Um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I love that, Jay. You know, and yeah, I'm, I'm sure, you know, Demon Slayer is going to be all typified in, in no time. Um, but yeah. <laughs> 